So far in the series we have made the long journey from the east coast of South Africa to the west coast and have just spent a couple days camping on the beach in an extremely remote area only accessible via a single sand road running hundreds of kilometers along the coast. We entered day four completely unsure of what lies ahead and ready for more low range action. Let's see what happens. So day four, uh, early in the morning, sun hasn't come up yet and uh, we've just finished packing up a whole bunch of stuff. Last thing to do is the rooftop tent and then we can hit the road. Um, completely un uncertain of what today is going to hold. Haven't made plans, we're going to just take it as it comes. Part of the reason we're being spo so spontaneous is we don't know how long it's going to take to, to get through the whole sand road section all the way up the coast. We're going through the Namakwa National Park and there's a 4x4 route there called the Caracal Eco Trail which we're going to be uh, attempting today. And the fridge is also still not working, fridge and freezer. So that also gives us a bit of a dilemma with food. Thankfully we do have backup food, I mean we've got stuff in tin cans and spaghetti and, and pasta and stuff like that. So we'll be okay, but it's just a bit of a disappointment if we, if we have to lose everything in the freezer. But we'll see how it goes. We rev up the engine and depart from camp just as the sun is peeking up over the horizon and we are straight into the action as we see a winding road snaking through the dunes up ahead. It's tires down to one bar and foot down on the accelerator. With probably about half a ton of extra weight on the Hilux, she requires some good momentum. Keep momentum here, man. Keep momentum here, man. You don't want to get stuck again, man. Well, just a few minutes into our drive and it's already getting nice and technical. Uh, lots of um, corrugations on the main road and then you've got all these loops that go off along the coast and we just took a loop now that was very soft sand. I was actually getting very nervous after yesterday's, uh, well not yesterday, the day before's event of getting stuck. But uh, low third, just floored it through there and thankfully we kept on momentum, momentum through that sand. If you, if you get stuck there, with, with no place to winch off, no recovery vehicle, it's just recovery tracks and, and a lot of time. <laughs> so thankfully we didn't get stuck. I think we're going to avoid any uh, potential uh, bogging down situations and just keep going and uh, make it to the National Park where hopefully there'll be a few more people if we get stuck to help us out. Right now, I mean, we haven't seen anyone for the past three days. So if we get stuck here, it's trouble. We do of course pull over every now and again to just enjoy the surroundings and it's great to see some activity with plenty of dica running around and flowers everywhere. Still a way to go until we reach the Namakwa National Park and we are enjoying every second of it. The lighthouse marks the first sign of civilization we've seen in days and signals our entry into the Namakwa National Park. Sandparks is one of the few government organizations in South Africa that actually seems to perform their job effectively, maybe because they are driven by passion for conservation and not just money. And it's great to see them looking after a coastline that has been badly abused by the mining industry. Right, so we've just pulled up to the Groenrefield Mont, which means the Green River Mouth. Um, it's one of the few sort of major rivers, if you can say that, that, that run here to the, the west coast. And this marks the beginning of the Namakwa National Park. So um, we got here fairly quickly, so I think we can, we're probably going to check in, pay our conservation fee, and then drive all the way through the Namakwa National Park on the Caracal Eco Trail. And then we might backtrack back in and, and camp in the Namakwa National Park if we can get a campsite. They may only allow camping with prior booking, but we'll ask at the gate. If we can't, 
then we might just find a camping ground in Hornetcliffe Bay and stay there. It would actually be nice to stay in a little historic coastal town where there's some shipwrecks and stuff like that. But we'll take it as it comes. We've got a beautiful day, beautiful sandy road ahead of us. Let's do it. We pull into the office for our permits and are welcomed by friendly staff. I don't mind paying conservation fees at all, especially when I know that it's helping to preserve these wild areas. Right, so we have a, a plan now <laughs> for the day. We've just come through the entrance gate, uh, we've paid our conservation fee and thankfully we could book a campsite. So we've got a campsite today uh, at a seal colony where there's over 4,000 seals. So hopefully it smells okay, <laughs> but it'll be interesting to see all those seals. And we're going to drive all the way through and there's a loop that goes more inland where we can see flowers. The rest of the, uh, the trip is mostly along the coast. But we'll take that inland loop and, uh, and probably have lunch somewhere on that, on that route. And um, along the way there are two dune fields that we have to cross and obviously when we're on these gravel roads we're going to keep it like 1.5 bar tire pressure and I think over the sand we'll probably lower it down to one bar just to be safe. Awesome, looking forward to it. The sections of road where the sand is really soft have two lanes, obviously just to allow people to keep momentum without having to pull over for traffic coming from the opposite direction. This of course doesn't make you immune to getting stuck, as this VW van found out the hard way. What they were doing on this road I have no idea, but after getting them unstuck we advised them to turn around as they clearly weren't prepared for the roads ahead. So we're just uh, passing a massive dune field um, called the Bitterfield Dunes. Um, we're up on a kind of an elevated point now and we can see one section of the dunes and it really looks a lot like, like Namibia, just with white sand instead of like that typical orange uh, Namibian sand. But you know, have, to have like desert dunes right next to the beach, it just makes me think of Namibia. Very cool. And um, I think we're coming close to that little loop where we, turn, we can turn off. I was very, very keen to uh, fly the drone, but it looks like drone flying is not prohibited here, unfortunately. Um, so we'll have to make another plan to show you what it looks like here. But oh, it's so wild and so beautiful and so vast. Like you look at this park on a map and it looks small, but you, you forget how big the country is um, until you see big open spaces like this and it makes you realize what we have on our doorstep. We found the turn off to the inland loop which heads east before turning around and heading back towards the coast. We plan to stop on a hilltop for lunch, but first, let's find some flowers. The Namaqualand area spans almost half a million square kilometers or 170,000 square miles and is known for two things. Firstly, the Nama people, an indigenous group of which 80% was brutally wiped out by the German Empire in the early 1900s. But we'll talk about the Nama people later. The reason that we are here is the flowers. There are over 3,000 species of flowers here, most of which aren't found anywhere else in the world. This was certainly the highlight of Nicole's day. Looking at these old buildings along the way, one can only wonder what life must have been like living here as a farmer hundreds of years ago with all these flowers isolated from the rest of civilization. With the inland loop ticked off the list, it's time for lunch on top of a hill. So for lunch we found an awesome uh, cut point on a hill. Behind us we've got uh, the dune fields and the ocean. And in front of us we've got the mountains uh, of the Northern Cape stretching out and some plains down here with just flowers everywhere. It's really beautiful. Unfortunately it's very windy from that side so we've made a little sheltered spot here to cook our lunch. We're having chicken wraps. That might be the last 
meal from our freezer we have, which is no longer a freezer. It's all melted now, but we'll make the most of it and yeah, just take the day slow and get soaked all in and enjoy it. We still have a good few hours to go before sunset and we head down the hill and back towards the coast with the goal of visiting a few attractions on the Caracal Eco Trail before setting up camp for the night. Coming across a rock with some fresh water trapped on top, we bring out the 12 volt pump and a 25 litre water tank and slurp up some water. This will allow us to take a nice long hot shower before climbing into our tent tonight. Well, you remember that massive dune field you saw earlier? Well, we're on the road now that goes through here. Although the section we're going through is kind of a break in the dune field, it's, it's not really dunes here. You can see there's some dunes underneath the vegetation, but it's not like open sand like you saw in those other images. So it's not too difficult to pass. Um, it's definitely 4x4 only. You have to, even with the 4x4, you have to lower your tire pressures, especially at the weight we, the weight we are with everything here. We'll definitely get stuck if we don't uh, lower tire pressures. But yeah, for the most part, the road is, is kept in pretty good condition and you can see they've put a bit of gravel on top to make it harder. But I believe there are some sandy sections which will probably pass through very soon where we're gonna need to just get some momentum and keep it going, which will be fun. We'd heard about a place called Spuchrafir Caves and that it was a place of archaeological significance so we take a coastal route along the beach and keep the wheels turning. So the name Namakwa, you'll notice the word Nama is in the word Namakwa. Now the Nama people were the original, oh, I suppose living up here, <laughs> the Nama people were the original uh, like Bushman people who, who lived here for many many thousands of years. It's hard to explain the difference between like a, a Khoisan slash Nama Bushman and the like darker African skinned, darker skinned African people. I can only show you with a picture I guess but they look very very different and um, the Nama people they would they, they were nomadic people so they, they they would travel many many hundreds of kilometers and they would either keep livestock in later days or they would hunt and they'd live off bulbs they'd get water from bulbs if you've ever seen the movie the gods must be crazy you'll know um, what kind of the Khoisan Bushmen were about but the Nama people um, this cave is there's a plaque here explaining the, the significance of this. It's got archaeological uh, significance in that they found bones of domestic sheep dating back 2,000 years. So they were able to prove that the Nama people actually kept domestic animals um, that long ago, which is pretty cool. But just thought I'd throw that in there. I didn't know this cave existed, but we saw it on the map. We thought we'd come here and we're very glad we did. is that we're not going to have enough time to go to Honor Club Bayern to get ice and supplies so we are heading back to our campsite and um, we want to at least enjoy the last few or last hour and a bit of, of sunlight at the camp we don't want to be arriving too late and not being able to enjoy it so back to the camp we go first time camping in Namakwa National Park it's been such an awesome day so let's end it with a bang this may look like a house cat we thought so too at first, but it isn't. Well, you do not see that every day. We were on our way to see, or are on our way to see the seal colony, and I saw it looked like a domestic cat walking past, and then, you know, we're in the middle of a massive national park. There's no domestic cats here. <laughs> and it turns out it's an African wildcat, which is a, one of the smaller uh, 
black wild cat species obviously one of the cats that uh, domestic cats come from so pretty cool to see that did not expect that African wildcat on the beach it must be living off small birds and stuff here but very cool to see close to our camp spot for the night there is a colony of about 4,000 cape fur seals what makes them choose this particular spot over the rest of the rocks on the coast I really don't know that's a mystery but being a marine protected area they have all the fish to themselves here and don't have to compete with commercial fishing vessels not my favorite animals they stink and they look kind of like labradors with their back legs tied together but hey it's nice to see that they are thriving here back at the camp we find ourselves alone once again so we've arrived at our campsite at boulder bay and this is actually pretty cool um, we've set up our camp as, as normal with the awning and the rooftop tent and, and everything there however on this side we've got a nice little sheltered section that'll just give us some relief from the wind because the west coast is known for having pretty crazy wind and will just allow us to you know have some peace tonight when it comes to the wind so yeah it's an awesome spot very um, very remote um, no running water um, no electricity none of that so it's going to be business as usual tonight and uh, got a little bit of time to explore the beach but sun will be going down soon so i think we'll probably start cooking within the next 45 minutes or so the few ingredients that did make it through the the great uh, fridge slash freezer meltdown <laughs> are some mince and some bacon and we are going to pair that with onions mushrooms tomato puree and one or two other things and make spaghetti bolognese so it's going to be a very filling dinner more than we can possibly eat but anything we don't use we'll just go into Tupperware and we can warm it up tomorrow for lunch on the road or something so great opportunity to get some dinner in our tummies and Nicole and I are tag teaming cutting stuff up making ourselves cry with onions all of that so should be fun Well, dinner is served and comes at the right time too. We've had a long day, another long day. <laughs> Fourth night here of camping. Um, we've done about 1,200 1, kilometers in total and 200 of those were over the past two days on sand roads, very slow going. We got stuck a few times, uh, a couple times that were so bad that we actually didn't take the cameras out. <laughs> and we recovered someone as well and um, thankfully we didn't need another vehicle to recover us we managed to sort ourselves out but it's been a real adventure i mean completely wild and um, today we did see a few tourists and um, being a national park and being a, a weekend um obviously people are wanting to come out now especially during the flower season and see everything so the namaqua national park has been busy but the coast that we were on 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 the private land over the past two two days has been completely us a complete isolation not a soul in sight no signal nothing so it's been fantastic but tomorrow the time has come to leave the west coast and head back home we're going to be breaking the trip into two days once again we don't know where we're going to be staying tomorrow night we don't know what route we're going to take tomorrow and um, we're going to probably get signal and then sit down look at our maps google stuff find uh, a place to stay and then take it from there but that's tomorrow's concern Tonight we are having spaghetti bolognese and uh, we're going to enjoy it and then probably get a fairly early night and get some good rest because it's an early start tomorrow. Hope you enjoyed the day. To follow along with the last episode of this adventure, be sure to subscribe and turn your upload notifications on by clicking the bell icon. Thanks for watching once again and we'll catch you on the final episode of our West Coast series.